Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I do nothing but elder law. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. Um, we actually have uh, 20 lawyers here in Westboro. We have 70 overall. But this show is not about elder law. It is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary uh, have a goal of living in their house until they die and being buried in the backyard. And if that means Westboro, that means here. So the question for Frank and Mary and the question for this show is who do Frank and Mary need to know? What do they need to know? What programs do they need to know about in order to live here in Westboro for the rest of their lives? So my wonderful co-host on this show, you all know, is Shelby Marshall. who has been a selectman now for several years here in um, Westboro. Uh, and even has a day job dealing with seniors all the time. Shelby finds these great guests, but today we've got a guest that we both know, um, our friend Representative Danielle Gregoire, and Shelby will be introducing her um, because Danielle is up for um, re-election and we wanted to make sure that every senior, uh, that Frank and Mary know where who Danielle is and why she's running for re-election. And then in our next show, we're going to be talking to her opponent in the final election. Shelby, whom do we have today? And why don't you kind of take things from here? Great, thanks so much. Good morning, Arthur, great to see you again. Uh, welcome, Representative Gregoire. Um, I feel like we know each other uh, well enough that I can call you Danielle, and I'm of sure course. you expect that. Uh, so we'll go with that. Um, uh, I do uh, wanna thank you for coming on. I think uh, this format has become really important for all of our viewers uh, to stay updated with what's going on to matters that are important to them in Westboro and certainly elections are critically important um, to Frank and Mary and, and, and everyone. Um, so with that said, um, please introduce yourself, make sure you tell the viewers what district you're representing and then we'll get into just so our viewers know we've got three questions that we provided to Danielle, her opponent, um, um, on the um, next show, we'll receive those same questions. And then each candidate was asked to give one question that um, of their choosing. So we'll start with the three, and then uh, if we have time for the fourth, then we'll certainly include that. So Danielle, please and welcome. Good morning, thank you for having me again so soon. It seems like just yesterday that I was with you uh, discussing the coronavirus pandemic and the state's response there too. So I'm grateful to be back uh, again today to talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing in the legislature and about my candidacy for re-election. So for the last eight years, since the 2012 uh, census redistricting, I have represented the uh, towns of Northboro and Westboro and the city of Marlboro, none of uh, the entirety of the communities that I represent. So it keeps me on my toes and it keeps me moving. I represent about 10 precincts here in Marlboro, as well as two each in Northboro and Westboro. Um, and then, as some of the viewers will be aware, uh, last session I served as the chair of the Joint Committee on Elder Affairs, so I really got um, elbows deep into the issues that matter most to your viewers and their families. And then this session I've uh, chaired the Committee on State Administration and Regulatory Oversight, which is vastly different and uh, widely ranging issues that I've been working on this session. So. Um, I think, you know, I'm a lifetime resident of Marlboro, graduate of the Marlboro Public Schools. I'm definitely, a, you know, a townie here, fourth generation resident of my, um, my mom's side of the family. So um, I certainly, you know, got into public service to protect and serve the folks that I know best and that I've grown up with my whole life and um, to preserve our communities for future generations of folks that want to grow up here. So with that, I guess I, we can turn it over and I could talk more about experience and legislation and in, in the questions that we've discussed. Excellent, excellent. Um, I'll ask the first question, Arthur, you can um, take uh, others. Uh, so the first question is, what will your top three priorities be if you win the election? So obviously, number one on everybody's mind right now is the coronavirus pandemic. So not only will we continue, uh, as we discussed on our last show, the legislature has voted to continue formal session to the end of the year, which will allow us the ability to deal with not only the public health issues that will continue to arise and that may arise as a result of a second surge, but also the economic issues that are uh, continue to arise as a result of what's happening with the pandemic. Um, so those are the number one priority. Um, the second thing is related to the first thing, which is uh, uh, budgetary issues and rebuilding um, our economies here locally in the district. And um, in another question later, we'll talk about how 
I've been prioritizing our local uh, communities as far as budgetary needs go. We have committed to fully funding um, local aid and education funding from the state for this fiscal year, which will end next summer in the middle of the summer. Um, but obviously there are going to continue to be issues that will surround our budgetary needs. Um, Arthur and I were speaking before we formally started the call about how we've been waiting for Congress to step in and provide some additional financial relief to states and municipalities, and they have yet to do that. So I think at this point, while we continue to keep our fingers crossed that they'll step in, I think at this point, um, and I'm sure the folks that are uh, in charge of the budget at the state house have already begun to prepare for the eventuality that that might not happen. So while we are stable for this fiscal year, I think we're gonna be feeling the, out, uh, the impacts of this to come. So it will be my job to continue to advocate for district priorities and financing. Um, so thirdly, we've had some success with statewide initiatives as far as when I was chair of elder affairs, we passed that groundbreaking Alzheimer's piece of legislation. And then this session, we were able to pass the ban on flavored e-cigarettes. Um, and so for next session, as far as wide ranging and not really district specific priority, I am looking to uh, continue my work with the minority leader, Brad Jones, on DNA databasing and rape kit testing. Um, Massachusetts is very, very low on the list as far as uh, success with our ability to get to our rape kit backlog. And uh, in order to provide justice for victims, I, it's a tantamount priority for me, as well as the Supreme Court ruled maybe five or seven years ago now, you can DNA swab a rape suspect on arrest. There does not have to be a conviction in order to get that DNA. And that process, if legalized here in Massachusetts, would allow us to uh, bring to justice a lot of serial rapists that we have not yet had the opportunity to bring to justice because they haven't been convicted. So if they haven't been convicted, we can't connect all of their crimes to one another. So we need to be able to do that. And like I said, it's something that I've been working on with uh, the minority leader. Um, so it's a bipartisan initiative. And I think it's something that we owe the victims here in Massachusetts, largely women, but obviously male victims as well. So that's my third priority. And I, and I would add to that, um, that final priority. I think it also... <laughs> Uh, in some ways benefits the uh, accused, right? Because um, DNA um, is, you know, become more tried and true. And so rather than being a, I think you were at the scene and you might have been the person, um, it becomes a more definitive test. So um, um, very interesting. Uh, great. Um, Arthur, do you want to take our second question? Shelby, I'm going to, although we, I want to, our list, for our listeners' benefit, this was done by, this one was done by Shelby, as will be clear, right? Eversource is proposing a high-pressure gas pipeline project that will run through Westboro's east side of town, private, pri past private residences, several senior residences, places of worship, and a school. This project will not directly service Westboro residents, nor improve service in Westboro. What is your position on this project? Do you support it? Yes or no? Please share your reason for support or opposition. Clearly, this is this is a, a question from a classic constituent, right, from Westboro. So I, I want to be perfectly clear about this. There has been misinformation and out and out lies put out there about the Westboro delegation and our role and our view on this. I do not support this project. The Westboro delegation, which, as you know, is representatives Kane and Dykema and myself, we are the only all-female delegation in the state and we are a bipartisan delegation and we work hand in glove together as a team and we have been involved with this issue from the very beginning. Representative Kane and I were at a meeting in the town uh, building back in January when Eversource presented their plan. The delegation sent a letter to Eversource in June and we just sent another one last week. Um, we have largely let Representative Dykema take the lead on this because the proposed expansion runs mostly through her part of the town. However, we have operated in lockstep and we have been very vocal in our desire to represent the town in that they are opposed to this pro project and proposal. And we feel it is our job to be vocal and stand with them in that. And we have done so regardless of the other perspectives that are being bandied about. Um, Danielle, I really appreciate your forceful and assertive response. Um, 
just as a quick side note, um, last night at our selectmen's meeting, we talked about preparing for the delegation meeting, which will happen on the 22nd um, of this month. So the all the um, representatives will be there. We're excited to have you. And not surprisingly, this question came up. So so you already sort of have uh, your your answer, and I and um, I appreciate that you've conveyed that here because I think it is important because. Um, there has been some misinformation um, in contrast to what you just shared. So thank you. Question and three comes from my friend Shelby Marshall. Yes. Okay. The state is committed, as you mentioned previously, to Level Fund 2021 um, at 2020 levels. That was positive news that municipalities received about a month ago. However, we all know that the town's expenses incurred as a result of the pandemic uh, and lost revenues or receipts will place towns in difficult in a difficult position financially. Every municipality will be reaching for the same dollar. What will be your approach to advocate for Westboro to ensure it receives its fair share and how do you focus your work? So I want to be clear about this as well. Uh, we've already done one pandemic uh, supplemental budget and I was able to get uh, well over a couple of hundred thousand dollars for the district whether it was uh, PPE or money for the food pantries, money for school supplies and technology upgrades uh, for the schools so that they can help students with remote learning. And this again was for all three communities. Uh, Northboro, because of their budgetary issues was forced to cut their uh, school crisis counselor and I was able to get funding so that they'll be able to replace that person, which is obviously super important right now while people are going through the trauma and stress that we're all facing. Um, so. I'm not going to do this. I have been doing this and I, you know, won't, there will be no learning curve. There will be no uh, where to start on day one because I've never stopped advocating for the pr priorities of the district. And uh, whether it was in our environmental bond bill, our IT bond bill, any bill that has come before me, I have always found a way to get money for the city of Marlboro and the towns of Northboro and Westboro. And I immediately, when any of those things are coming before us, reach out to either the mayor here or the town administrators there and find out what it is that they need and what it is that they have had to do without or go without or what could benefit them. And so I have a great relationship, as you know, Shelby, with the selectmen in both the towns and the city councilors here in Marlboro. Um, I meet with you folks on a relatively regular basis, and I'm making sure that I know, you know, I'm not just going to the state house and saying, hey, give me money for this when I don't know that the town really needs it. Um, so I've had a very successful track record of providing uh, financial uh, assets to the district and I will continue to be a very vocal advocate. You know I'm not shy <laughs> and I will continue to be asking for whatever it is that we need moving forward. Uh, great, thank you very much. Um, Arthur, um, do you have so the- So this is this is a question that, that Danielle had asked us to ask her and I think it, it obviously in any, in, especially in any race where there is where there is an incumbent and then a challenger, it's a really important question. So. So, uh, Danielle, what is it that you feel uh, um, separates you from your opponent in terms of what, you know, it, but in, in, in terms of policy, in terms of approach to the job, in terms of the totality of what it is to be a state rep? And certainly, you know, you, you've been there for a while, so you can certainly speak to these issues. So the first thing I think is approach. I think it's a really important thing to discuss. As you know, I'm widely available. My personal cell phone number has been on every piece of campaign literature that I've ever sent out. It's in, you know, probably in the hundreds over the years. Um, it's on my business card. I will meet with folks wherever they would like me to meet them. I try to actively engage folks to get opinions. I've had town halls. I've done, you know, everything I can to ensure that I'm voting the way that the residents of this district would have me vote. And my opponent is miles from that. He is unavailable. I've heard from numerous sources that he has uh, does not answer his telephone and there is, you know, the voicemail's full if it even picks up. He has been calling into these boards of board of selectmen meetings um, from a, an undisclosed location saying that he's a private citizen. Well, I say when you put your name on the ballot, you're no longer a private citizen. I'm a public servant and that is my job and I do it. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, but that's what we sign up for when we put our names on the ballot. And I think that's the first huge difference. The second thing is that 
while I have accomplishments to point to, such as the money that I've brought back to the district, the bills that we've done for the towns and city, whether it's, um, you know, redoing the town charter there in Westboro, or um, now we're trying to get uh, dispose of a piece of land that's been somewhat tumultuous there in Westboro that I've taken the lead on. Um, so policy accomplishments and monetary accomplishments for the district, as well as wide ranging policy accomplishments uh, across the state, like the Alzheimer's bill and the flavor ban, um, continued policy objectives um, outlined. You know, we're here to talk about environmental justice and social justice and economic justice. And we have solid policies in place that we've voted on and that we I will continue to support that will move us in the right direction. To this day, I still don't know where my opponent stands on anything. He's got a very flowery, esoteric language about how he's going to bring people together and talk to people and get their opinions. But at the end of the day, we have to take a yes or no vote. It has to be an informed vote. And we can't throw out the good for the perfect. So we have to be pragmatic in our decision making. And I have yet to see any of that from my opponent. So I just um, and I, again, constituent services, you know, we have helped hundreds and hundreds of people throughout this pandemic in my office, whether it's unemployment, food insecurity, uh, issues with the IRS or the DOR, and any number of issues, helping people get access to testing. And, uh, you know, I continue to do that every single day. Um, so I just think that when it comes time to make a vote in November, people need to realize there is no substitute for experience when we're facing a crisis of the magnitude of the coronavirus pandemic. And I have the experience and the track record that prove that I'm the right person for this job right now. And you and you and you have the experience to also um, demonstrate that you can really be on time. You, everyone that was that was that was uh, that was um, eloquently put. So thank thank you very much. Um, Shelby, do you want to you want to uh, close or ask for any final comments? Um, um, and then we're know, going to have we're going to have um, the the her opponent on. Is it at the next show or the show after that? Is it um, waiting, waiting to confirm the actual date. I'm hoping it's our next show. Yep, I get it. Um, so, you know, I'm just curious for for the young folks out there. I think it's it's so wonderful to see um, yourself as a, a woman in leadership. Um, uh, being in your position, as you said, as a public figure is not easy. Um, folks might think it's it's a glory position, and sometimes it is. Um, you get to do a lot of really cool things and get invited to a lot of events. But what would you say for young emerging leaders and why what you do, you know, why you could wake up every day and say, this is the right fit for me and I'm doing a really good work and it matters? I have to tell you, Shelby, the last few months have been challenging and I haven't woken up every day with that feeling. Um, more often than not, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't continue to seek reelection. Um, but I, you're right. You know, the bottom line is we're making a difference for people every single day with every single thing that we do. And, um, you know, whether it's supporting a local business, I always get a kick out of when I'm out uh, doing an errand or whatever. And people say to me, you don't have someone to do this for you. And I'm thinking, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't run for Queen of England, you know. Um, so, um, I, you know, people do, I think, think that it's a little fancier and more glam than it is. But we're in the trenches doing the work every single day and knowing that we're making a difference in people's lives. And that's what gets me out of bed every morning. And, um, you know, I always want to encourage, too, I didn't say this before, but I want to encourage folks if they have any questions to reach out to me directly. Um, you know, there is a lot of misinformation out there, and I, to a fault, am a straight shooter. So I, I'm always happy to kind of set the record straight or answer folks' questions, um, and I'm always going to be truthful regardless of whether uh, people are going to like the answer, unfortunately. You know, we don't have the luxury in this business of, for lack of a better phrase, blow and smoke up people's asses. I'm sorry if that's not appropriate, but again, that's how I talk. So uh, we don't have the luxury of doing that. So I'm going to be honest. And uh, so I would encourage people to reach out to me either by email or my cell phone is 508-479-9127. If the viewers didn't have a chance to write that down, you can get a hold of Shelby or someone from we'll put it, the show. We'll put it and, okay. Yep. And I am always, I will take a call. If I'm not on a Skype, I will take a call any time of the day or night. And um, I'm really just trying to get people as much information as I can and as much help as I can every single day. Excellent. So thank you very much. Thank you, um, 
uh, Danielle. It's, it was just a pleasure. It's a pleasure seeing you, seeing you again. And and thank you, Shelby, for suggesting this. Uh, Danielle, as, as Shelby had mentioned, what you know we found in, over time is that a, a lot of folks are watching the the a lot of seniors are watching a lot of folks are watching this show, but a lot of seniors, even whether the issue is directly related to seniors or just issues that seniors are interested in, and certainly mm -hmm. who your state rep is is something that people are interested in. So we really appreciate your taking the time. So 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 um, uh, Danielle, you can you can now drop off if you'd like because what we typically do at the end of the show is I ask Shelby to kind of give an update on on kind of what is what's going on in town. Okay. All but right. thank you very much. We thank really thank appreciate you, everybody. it. Stay safe. Thanks. So Shelby. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Um, and I look forward to hearing the other. And, and I think that once again, this is a really useful, a useful um, uh, um, um, piece of our, of the show is to get these folks right. Cause otherwise you wouldn't, you, how would you see them? You know, how would you really well, have a sense Particularly of because a lot of the public events that they might have done in the past have been limited because of COVID. So um, I'm right. really excited that both uh, candidates are uh, were willing to join the show. So I'm hoping our next show will be um, uh, Sy Dr. Syed Hashmi, who is uh, Representative Gregoire's uh, challenger in the race, I'm waiting to confirm that date. But we've got some really um, interesting shows coming up. Um, we're going to talk about the new VIA transportation program on a, an upcoming show. This is a collaborative kind of pu private public partnership to help with transportation. Sort of think of it like uh, inexpensive Uber with a technology twist and helping people move within Westboro into Southboro, Northboro. So folks are going to be very interested, Frank and Mary in particular. Um, and we're also going to have the folks from Westboro Power Choice, which is the Community Aggregation Electricity Program on. Now, that might not sound electrifying, ha, 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 um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm getting... That is I, so bad. I know, it really was. I didn't even plan that. Um, um, but uh, we have a, Westboro just signed a new contract that goes into effect in November, and there, is a, there are a lot of predatory practices out there. So they're going to come on. They're going to be doing a number of presentations, but they specifically asked if they could come on to Frank and Mary so they could reach um, our viewers and um, educate them about this new program and um, how to stabilize um, and plan for uh, electricity expenses. And there's an increased green component uh, to the new contract. So um, by being part of the program, you're helping the environment. So, and you're saving some money. So um, all good stuff. So lots coming up, lots and lots. That's great. That's great. Anything, anything special happening at the Selectman that, that upcoming that people should be tuning into at the next Selectman's meeting? Um, so uh, probably most importantly is we set the date for the special town election for September 29th. There are three articles on the warrant. Uh, we have um, um, a the purchase um, of the uh, 31 to 33 Eli Whitney, which is 66 acres of what will be conservation space. Um, the fire department um, article it has an article on there as well, which is um, funding of uh, for their um, self-sustaining uh, breathing apparatus. So they got a massive grant, and so the town is being asked to um, um, fund the back the, the the balance of that. And then there's another small kind of technical thing about uh, the water treatment plant RFP. So that's coming up, and then we also set the date of our fall town meeting, which is November 14th. Uh, very late in the year, but because of a number of things, we're kind of waiting for budgets to be settled and, and numbers to be in. And um, so, um, but we've got to do that in time for the tax rate to be set. Um, uh, they had a five hour meeting last night for folks that want to watch it. Uh, Westboro TV uh, taped it all. So uh, lots, lots of good content out there. That's great. That's great. So thank you. Know, thank you. Thank you for that summary. In, in the first um, thing, a thing that you talked about at the end of September, you referred to a special town election. Oh, no, or is that a special, special town, town meeting? meeting? If I said special election, I meant, I meant meeting. And, and, you, and I think you gave the date, but what is the, what is the, the uh, once again, what is the day and what is the time of that meeting? Uh, Tuesday, September 29th, and I believe it's at 7 p.m. I don't have that right in front of me, but. Yep. Okay. So for folks who are tuning in, once again, that's one of the purposes of this show is just to keep you up to date on among other things, the things that you want to be connected to or that you want to be seeing, which Westboro Cable just does a great job of developing all of that stuff. So 
Uh, Shelby, thanks again for, thanks, for setting these up. I think this is really this is really important stuff for every for Frank and Mary and every other voter in um, in in uh, Westboro. And uh, thank you to, thank you to Aiden and Karen Henderson and the folks at Westboro Cable for do, for allowing us to do this show. And I hope you found this useful, folks. Uh, and uh, please tune in next week to the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Bye.